Katie here from Juicy Body Art and Face Painting in Melbourne and in the last video, part one, you learned how to dome your one strokes that you've bought from a shop. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to dome your one strokes when you're making them from scratch. So watch on. Okay, so what I've got here is, uh, this is my little UV um, one stroke set that I've made myself. Uh, it's just an ice cube tray that I got from one of those um, Japanese discount stores. So it's actually a lot, you can see that it's quite deep. Each slot is really, really nice and deep. And it's longer than a usual one stroke cake. So for comparison, there's a normal one stroke cake. So you've got um, a lot more surface area to swipe your brush over. So you don't have to swipe it over 6 million times to load it. So. Um, so I'm going to put, create a new one stroke right here out of these three beautiful colours. This one is Chameleon uh, Electric UV Purple by Madeleine Greco. Um, this one is, what are you? This is just a tag magenta and this one's FPA Pink, FPA UV Pink. All three are UV colours, of course, because I love my UV. So I'm going to show you, this is the first method that I, that I generally use. Um, if your cake is beautifully unadulterated, there's no chunks taken out of it already, then the most easy way to do this is to just slice across. So I'm going to take about that much and I'm just going to slice into it. Can you see what I'm doing here? Just slicing across so that I've got this nice sort of not quite a semicircle, obviously, but almost a semicircle of nice heaped paint. And I'm just going to dig my little tool in, and the paint kind of just comes out a little bit like plasticine. Um, older cakes will be a bit more crumbly, and they take a lot of working up. There's heaps of videos on YouTube um, to uh, on how to restore crumbly cakes and use them in your one strokes and stuff. So check those out. But um, UV paint is always nice and sticky and plasticine-y, I find. So uh, this one's going to be nice and easy to pull out. And it's all in one nice chunk um, with a nice curve on one end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my container and I'm just going to stick this in on one side of it. So as you can see, I've got a nice curved little chunk of paint right there. And now I'm going to do that six million more times with all the other colours. So I've actually just lift this, lifted this whole thing out of the container first to show you just how it looks when it's in the container. So see how it's nice and flat at each end and it's got a nice hump in the middle. Um, you can also, if, if you um, generally load right in the middle of your cake, you can make the outer colours a little bit lower and make the inner colours a little bit taller. Um, but I, I generally just fix that in repairs rather than doing it at this point. Um, what I might even do is add a little bit of UV white to one end of that so that it's um, even prettier and fills up the container a little bit more and then I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I've just popped it into my container. All I need to do is press it down and then I'm ready to go. I'm just going to use a baby wipe, just a little wet wipe to press it down make sure that it's hitting the bottom of the container and just to make sure that all of these colors are nicely um, tapering away at each end. And voila, there you have your own domed one stroke. And I'll turn it this way so that you can see how much curve we've got there. And let's load up a brush and I'll show you how I load. So basically it's all about sweeping up the mountain rather than sweeping right in the middle back and forth. I kind of sweep up on both sides 
and what I find is that this loads the paint really really high up the brush right to the ferrule so that the paint wicks down and you don't have to reload quite so frequently so it's also a loading aid for me and now that we've got a nice load on our brush there you have it so what do you do when you don't have a perfect round cake to chop a wedge out of. What if your cakes look more like this or like this and you're just desperate to use up the scraps of your paint in your one stroke? Well, I'm gonna show you how I do that as well. Okay, so what I've got here is just a little piece of baking paper, okay? Um, I want a surface that I can roll things against without making a huge mess, something that I can just pick up and throw away afterwards. It might even be a good idea for you to, you know, use some baking paper or something as a table covering because all those little crumbs just go everywhere. So it's easy to just pick it all up and throw it in the bin. So what I'm going to do, I want to repair this one stroke. It's getting down to the bottom. As you can see, it wears really nice and flat towards the, towards the bottom, um, but I would like to refill it a little bit. So I'm going to use these little scraps of paint to refill. So you can actually, see how I've got all these nice curves here? You can technically just sort of cut in at an angle like that, scoop that out, like so. And once you flatten it out, you've got a tapered bit at the end and it's a bit thicker in the middle. So you can just plonk that straight into your one stroke cake. I'm gonna show you how I do that. All right, so there's that. And then I only need about from here to here left. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. And I'm gonna stick it to my spatula and pop it in here. So that's one way to repair it when you've only got little skerrix of paint left. Um, another way is to roll it into a sausage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that there's no cross-contamination of colours on my spatula and I'm going to take this pink, this UV pink, and you might want to wear gloves if you're going to do something like this because this does involve a bit of, bit of handling. So I'm going to go put my gloves on. Ta-da! All right. So what I'm just going to do with this is roll it give it a squeeze and make sure that it's nice and skinny at the ends and I'm going to roll it kind of into a sausage. So there you can see that it's thicker in the middle and a bit of a bit more squish towards the ends and then I'm going to lay that into my one stroke cake as well. I'm just going to put that aside for a second because I need to go in and use my orange and I'm going to use that other old technique that we just learned before to pop the orange in next. So when you're cutting it out of a cake as well, if you've got plenty of cake but you don't want to ruin another edge, you can just cut on a curve. Just like so. See that? And you can create your own curve and lift that out. So that's going in next. Now I just added a little bit of extra yellow there because the orange was so tall. And now I'm gonna go in and place my squishy little slug piece of pink. And see how I'm using this spatula to kind of compress the pink against the orange so that I get nice neat stripes and it's not too fat in some areas and too skinny in others. So that's nicely compressed there. And now just for a little bit of UV red. Finally, as before, now that it's kind of all smooshed in, I'm going to smoosh it even more with a clean wet wipe. And ta-da, not too bad. Let me get a brush and test it. And 
there you go. So there you have it guys, domed one strokes. I started doing it about four years ago and I've never looked back. I always get to the bottom of a cake without any trouble and I don't have to repair my one stroke cakes quite as often as I used to. It's as simple as that. There's no secret to it. It's just changing the shape, guys. I hope that that was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please pop them in the comments below. And the most popular questions, I'll pop in an FAQ in the description below. Please like, subscribe, and share this video if you thought it was useful. And I'll see you next time. See you later.